Welcome to the Caffeinated Bible. Let's conduct a quick straw poll. If you could have only one reference book for studying the Bible that you would take to a deserted island, what would it be? A commentary? A concordance? Leave your answers in the comments under this video. It'll be interesting to see what you all vote for. From the title, I think you already know what my answer is. As a professor, my students often ask me which resources I recommend for studying the Bible. And after many years, I can definitely say that I would recommend a Bible dictionary first and foremost. One book to rule them all. Wait, wait, that's, that's not good enough. I have to channel my inner Tolkien here. One, One book, book to rule, rule them, them all. all. That's kind of fun. Can we do more of that? No? Okay. A Bible dictionary, in my so very humble opinion, is a must-have resource for anyone who wants to know more about their Bible or their faith. So what is a Bible dictionary? Well, this is where it gets kind of convoluted. What can you learn from them? Welcome to the channel. My name is David Paris, and for the past 20 plus years, I've been teaching at seminaries and graduate schools in the United States and around the world. And the goal of this channel is to take what I've been teaching in seminaries and make it available to anyone, anywhere in the world at any time. So if you like these videos, subscribe. That way YouTube will let you know why I put up more content. Give it a thumbs up. That really, really helps me. And if you want to engage, leave a comment below. This is going to be a two-part video. Why? Because I said at the very start, it's rather convoluted when we talk about what we mean by a dictionary when it comes to biblical studies. Normally, a dictionary would be defined in the following manner. Let me read from the dictionary here. Noun, plural, dictionaries. A book or electronic resource that lists the words of a language, typically in alphabetic order, and gives their meaning, or gives the equivalent words in a different language, often also providing information about the pronunciation, origin, and usage. A reference work on a particular subject, the terms of which are typically arranged in alphabetic order. A dictionary of quotations, for example. Now, when it comes to reference works on the Bible, the first definition here really does not fit. A Bible dictionary will not give you a list of the words found in the Greek or Hebrew text of the Bible in alphabetic order. Well, not quite. At the back of concordances, they will often have an abbreviated, what they call, dictionary of the words listed in the concordance. See my video on the genius of Strong's Concordance for more on this. More often than not, those dictionaries are just a listing of how that particular Greek or Hebrew word has been translated in that particular translation. And also, those dictionaries tend not to be very good, unless you get the new, revised, updated, expanded version of those concordances. But, if you do a search on Amazon for a Bible dictionary, this is not what you would find, a dictionary with the alphabetical listing of those words. Bible dictionaries that would come up are more like one volume, mini encyclopedias on places, people, things, events, customs, practices, beliefs, and theological concepts within the Bible. And just to make things even more confusing, sometimes they are called encyclopedias. Like the New International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. This is just one of four volumes. Now this is what we mean by a Bible dictionary that we are going to cover in this video. But just to jump ahead to the next video, the other type of dictionary is what is called a lexicon. I know, big fancy Greek sounding word. Now this is normally what we think of as a dictionary of Greek words or Hebrew words in the New Testament or Old Testament, for example. A lexicon of the Greek New Testament would be an alphabetical listing of the words that are used in the New Testament, usually based on the Greek spelling of those words. Now, lexicon is derived from the Greek word lexikos, meaning of or for words. This was transliterated into lexicon in the Latin during the Middle Ages. So why do we use lexicon when we are talking about dictionary on Greek or Hebrew words in the Bible? Well, it has a long history behind it. Hundreds of years ago, lexicons of Greek and Hebrew words were written in Latin and used by scholars. Hence, the Latin term lexicon. Because of this long historical use of the Latin lexicon for Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Latin words, it has sort of taken on a special and restricted use when it comes to biblical studies. 
and we're going to cover that type of dictionary in the next video. But I digress. Back to this video. So what are some of the best Bible dictionaries that I would recommend? Now, most of mine are on the computer now. I think this offers you a better, quicker, and more comprehensive access to their information. And here's a listing of the ones I have within my software accordance. But a good hard copy is hard to beat. Ah, the smell of book mold. So why do I recommend Bible dictionaries? First, for a couple reasons. Number one, they don't require any knowledge of Greek or Hebrew. Second, they are available in different languages and translations. So you get, for example, a Spanish translation of these Bible dictionaries. Three, they give you a great deal of information in one easy to find location. Four, they take a comprehensive approach to the topic. So you're most likely going to get more information on that topic than you were originally looking for. Five, your public library or church, if you have a church library, most likely has a couple in stock. Here's a listing that I just pulled up from the Pikes Peak Library District here in Colorado Springs. So if you don't have one, you don't need to go out and buy one. You can take a quick bike ride over and check one out for yourself at your local public library. And because I can't count on two hands, Finally, they are a great, quick, and easy way to look up a topic in the Bible and see if there's anything worth exploring. Usually there is. In just a few minutes, you can have at your fingertips a nice, concise summary on that idea. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you're interested in learning something about John. Now I'm going to look in the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, and I'm using volume two here because it's a four volume set. But I'm using this mainly because I have a print copy of it, but you can do the same with software versions as well. If you were to, for example, look up John in a lexicon or a Greek concordance, you're going to get where that word is used and what his name means. If you take a look at John in a Bible dictionary, we discover a lot more. We have articles here about John the Baptist, John's letters, with some great information on them, a long article on the Gospel of John, John Mark, a cross-reference to the book of Revelation, articles on John the Apostle, and all told over 20 pages of information on our short little inquiry about John. Also, when flipping there, right before it, we see that there's an entire entry on Johannite theology, or his particular focus and theological contributions, etc., 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 so you see, we get a great deal of information very quickly when we look up the topic John. Let me give you one word before we move on about Bible dictionaries. Make sure you check the publication date of them. There are a number of Bible dictionaries that were written 100 to 200, even 300 years ago that are very, very popular today because they're public domain and they get included for free in software or printed very cheaply and you'll see them available in bookstores. Two of the biggest ones here that you're going to see is Smith's Bible Dictionary. This is very, very popular and it's often included free in the Bible software, but it was originally published as the Dictionary of the Bible in 1863. Easton's is another one you're going to see offered at very reasonable prices or for free. Like Smith's, it's public domain now and was originally published in 1894. These were great sources over a hundred years ago but are very outdated today. So for example, if you were to look up Galilee in Smith's Bible Dictionary, he's going to tell you that this was a very wealthy and prosperous area during the New Testament era. But from archeology span over the past 150 years, we know that there were wealthy landowners who controlled most of the land and the vast majority of the population were serfs or peasants that worked for them. They were predominantly poor with a few very, very rich individuals that controlled most of the land. And you can see this economic division played out in the New Testament where Jesus condemns the rich or in the parable of the workers in the vineyard where the rich man who owns a vineyard goes into the marketplace and hires people at four or five different times of the day to work in his vineyard. One of the things that make these dictionaries so valuable is the extensive contributions that are made by different scholars, some of the best around the world. 
So the editors, when they are tasked with putting together a dictionary like this, are tasked with finding the experts on the particular topics around the world. And as you can see, for the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, we have nine pages just listing out the contributors alone. Enough on that, though. Today, we have much better and more contemporary Bible dictionaries to use, so let's look at those. Now, I'm going to divide my discussion of them here between one-volume and multi-volume Bible dictionaries. Unlike a concordance, a Bible dictionary is not dependent on the translation you use, so they're a useful resource for any Bible reader using any translation. I would not go for a concise or compact Bible dictionary as a one-volume Bible dictionary usually about this size, is pretty concise already, believe it or not. Now, as I said, most of mine are on a computer now. I gave away my print copies to friends and students a long time ago. But here are a few contemporary Bible dictionaries that I recommend. First off, the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. This is also available in Spanish. Many of these Bible dictionaries include photographs and diagrams to help you understand the concept, which I think is really important. A picture is worth a thousand words. Another good one is the Nelson Illustrated Bible Dictionary. We have a Dictionary of the Bible by Oxford. This is an excellent source that represents sort of the best of English biblical studies. Unger's Bible Dictionary. Get the updated version of this that was done in 2006. And then the Zondervan Illustrated Bible Dictionary, done in 2001. If you're Catholic, I would look at the Catholic Bible Dictionary. It will give you articles and information on topics that are specific to your theological tradition. Now, multi-volume dictionaries are going to cover the same ground, but in a lot greater depth and detail. And if you're in seminary or Bible college, these are the resources that I would take a look at if you're writing a paper, doing research, or looking at something to buy. And if you're a family member, these make an excellent Christmas present, by the way. First one, New Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible. This is a five-volume set from Abingdon, and it is excellent. Inner Varsity has a, I believe it's nine-volume set on the Old and New Testaments. I just have the four New Testament ones in print, but you can see immediately just how much more information a multi-volume set would have especially when you're getting up to like nine volumes on them. Move them off to the side here. Ugh. And let me pull down my other volumes of the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. Now, the thing to realize about this series is that there's a 1915 edition that is public domain now, and it's available on the internet, and I will have the link right here at the bottom of the video. But this set was revised between 1979 and 1995. This revision is by Jeffrey Bromley, who taught at Fuller Theological Seminary, by the way, and earned the Gold Medallion Book Award for reference works when it was first published. The Zondervan Pictorial Encyclopedia of the Bible is five volumes, and this one's a little bit dated right now, as it was done in 1975, but it is an excellent resource. And finally, the gold standard of them all, is the Anchor Bible Dictionary, which got bought out by Yale Publishers. Now it's the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary, but it can be rather overwhelming to look up something in there. And this was published in 1992. If you have a Bible Dictionary that I did not mention, please drop a comment below and tell us why you like that one, what you find useful about it, and for everybody else who has a Bible Dictionary, Please drop a line and let us know what are your thoughts on the value of owning a Bible dictionary for interpreting the Bible. We would all love to hear from you. Before I get buried by this pile of dictionaries I'm accumulating here, let's call it a week. If you click on this cartoon of my head up over here, YouTube will subscribe you to my channel, which helps me and you. It's really a win-win. If you click on this thumbnail over here, YouTube will take you to my video on the best free Bible software. It's a real blockbuster filled with action and drama. Over here, this is the video that the AI avatars at YouTube think you would like to watch next. Until we meet again, peace.